welcome. So we got this page from literal zero traffic to around 80 in just a few hours. And I'm gonna show you what the page is, what we did and how to actually write content that gives you these results. And more important than that, write content that's not necessarily focused on this number right here, but focusing on the money this number can bring in. Because you've heard me talk about this before, traffic can be a vanity metric, right? All these 80 people might bring us zero dollars. But in this case, they didn't because we write the content in a way and we target the keywords in a way that their um, intent, the intent behind the keywords people are searching for to reach this page is money driven. Let me break it down. So the page is this one right here and the keywords it ranks for are these ones right here. So the page, quite simple, right? This is a page on our blog, right? We'll go over all this. This is the content, right? Just a quick, quick screen through, bunch of paragraphs, bunch of images, a bunch of links, okay? Now I'll go over how to write this content that ranks and why it ranks. But before I do so, right, I wanna go over why in this case, it's way, way, way more important to look at the keyword itself than the traffic. So this is a blog post about 15 competitor, so this is a competitor of ours, alternatives for AI writing, okay? Research for. Now, notice that this was posted five months ago, and only now we're seeing the fruits of our labor. Now, this is not to say that SEO takes this long. It doesn't, right? Reason why it took this long to see results is because we haven't done, and we didn't do anything to this page. We haven't built any links. We haven't, we just let it sit, which is not something that I recommend. I recommend when you put out content, don't just let it sit. Build links to it, create new content that interlinks with this one. Like there's a bunch of stuff you can do, which I've outlined in a previous video, which I'll leave below in the description. But just know that, yes, the results we saw were in, when, were in, excuse me, a few hours, as you see here, right? But the page had been created a while back. Okay, so just being fully transparent here on why that is. Now, again, it is, the keywords we're targeting are people that understand what their pain point is. So they're looking for a tool that allows them to do AI writing. They understand this is a competitor. Maybe they've used it in the past, right? Maybe they paid for it and they're actively looking for an alternative, okay? So this is the most B-O-F-U, bottom of the funnel content there is. Why? Because again, people searching for this are aware of what the market is. They've tried the competitor and they're actively looking for an alternative, a cheaper alternative, an alternative with more features, whatever that is, right? Doesn't really matter. And so the keywords we rank for, right? Not only we rank for this page, excuse me, ranks for their brand name right here. Again, nothing, by the way, quick parenthesis here, nothing wrong with these guys. I've never used them before. I don't know, right? But I'm sure they're great. Um, so that just that. We're ranking for their brand name, right? Position nine, first page. And we're ranking for the keyword brand name alternatives, number three. And yes, this only gets 30 searches per month. Doesn't matter, right? Because you got to look at the intent behind the searches, right? If someone's searching on Google for, I want to buy an iPhone right now and have $1,500 in my bank to spend in the next few minutes. Nobody searched for this. This is just an extreme example. But if someone searched for this on Google and your page ranks first with a huge buy button, well, you're going to get the sale, even though just only one person a month searches for this, right? So it doesn't matter. Right? The only thing that matters here is the intent, the search intent behind the keyword. So we've produced this page in a way that we can target such keywords. Competitor alternative, competitor alternative with a modifier. So competitor alternative free or competitor alternative um, cheaper or competitor alternative with XYZ keyword or competitor alternative with or for, for example, for agencies, for Shopify brand owners, for e-commerce, doesn't matter. So there's a bunch of, there's infinite modifiers you can make, right? And so this page essentially is built out in a way where we, of course, the content is always valuable. People think that this is AI generated, by the way, excuse me, this is AI aided, by the way, it was generated with AI and then proofread by human. Uh, because people think that AI generated content doesn't rank. Well, it does rank. And it is, if it is high quality, it will rank. Because humans can produce bad quality content, but so can AI. So it's not that much, it's not so much who writes the content, right? It's how the content is written, if it's helpful for the end user, right? If the end user finds the content helpful, Google doesn't care if it's a human writing it, a robot writing it, a dog. They don't care, right? The only thing they care for is if the content is valuable for the end user and if it satisfies the user's search intent. And in this case, it does, right? People are looking for alternatives, right? There's a small intro with, of course, a link right here. This is an internal link, so linking out to another blog post of ours. This is a key here in terms of SEO. Um, and then we go over, okay, what is this tool? What is this tool that they're looking for an alternative for? And we add an image for context. A lot of people don't add images, 
right? And by the way, right now I'm explaining to you how we write content that ranks. And not only content that ranks, but content that converts people, okay? You'll notice that there's a bunch of calls to actions right here, but I'll go over that later on. Again, what is this tool that I'm using? Screenshot to there, so they can recognize the tool, right? And we go over what it is. We even link uh, to them or link to people talking about them, okay? Other blog posts about alternatives that we link. We, we're not afraid to link to our competitors. We're not afraid to do that. Because again, the goal here is to provide the user ex with the best experience possible. And if that means linking to the competitor, so be it. Doesn't matter, right? Um, then we go over a couple of common questions people have with uh, the um, the tool, right? And tell them what the pricing is. We tell them what they're reading. Uh, and we tell them, hey, listen, what is better than speed right? So now we start to introduce the different tools, right? Then we go over, right? Potential alternatives, right? Bring the line, whatever, right? Key features. We go over the key features of the tool. So again, what all this doing, right? Going over their pricing, their key features, what they are, is making this page hyper relevant for our competitors' keywords. So this page will soon be ranking for speed ride pricing, speed ride features. These will be keywords that speed ride would ideally want to be ranking for. But because we've produced content that's so much better than the actual competitor's content, we rank first. And I've discussed this, I think, in this video right here, which I'll put down below in the description, which in essence goes over how Wise or TransferWise produces content that's, excuse me, produces content for competitors, for example, for PayPal, which is a competitor of theirs, right? Wise produces content about PayPal's so much better than PayPal's own content that Wise ranks for keywords PayPal wish they ranked for. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, just watch this video right here. But in essence, we're producing content about Speedrite way, way better than themselves, right? You might think that this is contradictory. Why would you want to produce content about a competitor? Why would you want to give value to the competitor? Why, why would you want to rank for keywords about your competitors? Well, it's because if we rank for those keywords, people get introduced to our brand. People, people are reading this on our domain. And there's a bunch of calls to action here to get them to subscribe. So that's why we do all this. So again, we go over all the key features. We investigate what their brand does, what they do. And then we go over the alternatives. And of course, our very first one is our own. And of course, we... We don't just say just because, we give a reason why it is the best one. And you don't even need to give 15, right? You can just give yours, right? You can just do the best alternative and you give yours. But still, we give them a bunch of them. And of course, at the end on here, there's something that people often skip, which is giving a call to action to the actual tool you are wanting people to subscribe to. So the call to action starts right here. And then of course, there's a call to action right here. So it's filled with call to actions. And so the way you produce this is simple. We use AI, we use this tool right here, which allows you to produce that content. You can even, you can take your competitor site, you can literally copy their URL right here, put it in here, put it into journalist AI. You can even go to, uh, where is it? You can go to knowledge base, new knowledge base. You can create, um, what was the competitor name? Sorry, speed, right, right. And then we can upload their own brand assets to us. So we'll go here, speed right. We can upload all of this stuff. We can upload plain text, PDF documents. We can upload their site, their YouTube channel if you have one, if they have one, excuse me. And we upload all their branded assets to Channel CI. And that's how we're able to produce brand tailored content that talks about their brand that doesn't look AI-ish, right? That actually ranks. This, all the info here is taken from their brand. So the key, where do you think we took their key features and their key features from? Well, their website. Where do you think we got their pricing from? Well, their website. All this info about them is info we took from their own site, but we just wrote it in a better way. We provided provided extra value, more in-depth writing, right? We gave them, we gave users that are looking for these keywords a better value than their than the than the excuse me than Speedwrite is giving to their own users. Hopefully this makes sense. And then we just go here and generate an article based off of a knowledge base. Go to articles, new article. Actually, let me show you right here. Uh, we can go here. When you are uh, setting up the settings for your article generation, right, you go here to knowledge, and you select the knowledge base, speed, right? And then now it has the whole context of the brand. And you can do a bunch more stuff, right? You can target the language. You can even produce language content for your competitors in different languages if you'd like. Could be a great opportunity there. Change the tone of voice, change the point of view. Uh, you can do a bunch of stuff with your, you can give it more context, some instructions. You can select multiple languages at the same time. Change the formatting, set up the internal linking, of course, this key, set up the external linking as well. Set up the images if you want AI images or not, right? You can do a bunch of things, stuff right here. The whole goal of this tool, you can do all this manually, by the way. You don't need to use this software, you can do it all manually. The thing is that it's going to take you a lot more time. If you use this tool, it saves you a bunch more time. Now, in case, right, let's say the AI produces this article. And by the way, the AI will add the images as well and add the internal links and all that, add all that for you. Actually, let me just show you a quick example right here. And uh, after that, I want to show you in the case that you don't like the output, what you can do. So if I go here and just say uh, gardening in dry climates, right? I produced an art article about gardening in, um, 
in arid soils, right? This is all done with AI, even the image, right? Even the in-article videos that are relevant to the article that are added somewhere in here, not this one, excuse me, let me just go to the other one. So this is all done with AI. This saves you a ton of time. I can open this up right here, right, to show you what I mean, right? Even this video right here, which is tailored to what the content is about. So articles about gardening in, in uh, arid soils. And of course, both images, the content, even the videos target that specific vi the thing, the desert gardening, right? It's all None of this is random. But again, let's say, for example, you don't like some of the things AI did for you. Well, you can still uh, edit the content with AI. Let's say, for example, some links are missing here, which I think they are. You go here, add links, and the AI will read through the whole article as a whole and find the most relevant places with the anchor text to add, add links to. Boom, there you go. Let's say, for example, you don't like this image. You can go here and say, mm, okay, add a dog. And the AI will add a dog to the existing image. So it takes into account the whole context of the article as a whole, the context of the image, in this case, arid soils, of course, and, and adds a dog there. Boom, there we go. So you can change all this. You can say, for example, uh, I think this is too short, make it longer, make it short, make a list out of it, make a table. Uh, you can even add custom prompts, like write this as a, I don't know, as a, as a single mother looking, I don't know, or tailored to whatever. You can add infinite custom prompts. You can even sprinkle in your keywords if you feel like it's not, uh, uh, if, you, if you feel like, excuse me, you haven't sprinkled in your keywords enough, making it quote unquote SEO optimized, you can do so. For example, or your product name or uh, arid soil gardening. So you can sprinkle them in. You can do all this, all these custom prompts on all pile for you. So this, that's the good thing about this AI. Isn't it, it's not that it just allows you to generate content. It allows you to edit set content, which again, saves you a bunch of time. Right? And then of course, you can just hit this button to publish it straight to your site. It says integration, by the way, because... It integrates with all of these different CMSs, Blogger, Ghost, Shopify, Squarespace, Wix, Webflow, all of them, right? And so point here is that, and going back to the content, this ranks for a reason, right? This ranks because we've written it in a way that the content here not only satisfies the user's search intent, but it's so much better than any other content out there. And on top of that, not just the volume we get, which, I mean, might not be a lot, right? This is not a lot but the traffic is so, so, so bottom of the funnel because of the keywords this ranks for. People searching and landing on this page are searching for a competitor name, an alternative, a cheaper version, a version for XYZ, right? It's super bottom of the funnel. They're actively looking for it. That's why you need to focus on search intent, not volume. And then you go out and use AI to produce content like this, which I mean, again, you can do all this manually, but my, my point is that you should use AI get the draft over with, make it, make the AI add the images, have the AI add the links, have the AI add the videos, and then if you want, right, add, uh, edit the things manually if you like using the editor. That's it, pretty straightforward. Hopefully this was valuable for you. If you want more training on this, just go to trijulinks.com forward slash academy, which I'll leave a link down below in the description. And by the way, this academy offer includes a one year access to Journalist AI. You get a full 12 months access to Journalist AI, the tool that I used, that I'm using right now in this video. On top of that, let me just scroll past all these results. You get access to a bunch of my SEO courses and also the SEO community. So weekly live SEO calls, one-on-one -on -one SEO consulting with me. So you get a coaching call with me um, to discuss your brand, to discuss what I think you should be doing based on the competition. I go into the call, I analyze your site, analyze your niche and give you tangible tips of what you think, uh, of what I think, excuse me, you can do to improve. You get seven SEO courses, right? Plus the Rank and Rank plugin. These three courses, AI SEO course, SEO for beginners. So if you want to set up an agency, how to find clients, how to rank sites, all that stuff. Local SEO course, my YouTube video SEO course, super powerful. My link building SEO course, and by the way, the exact backlinks I teach you how to build on this course are backlinks I charge $300 for to my own customers. So that's pretty cool. The rank and rent SEO course plus the plugin that allows you to do the rank and rent very fast which is for WordPress, by the way, e-commerce SEO, SEO course, a bunch of like detailed step-by-step -step case studies. So I go over how brands are doing SEO. I break them, their sites down, their sites down, excuse me, I reveal their domains and tell you, hey, listen, this is what the guys are doing. Here's what you can do based on what they're doing. So I basically disconstruct what they're doing and a bunch more stuff. Here's it all summed up. Um, and of course, 100% money back guarantee if you're not happy with any of this, okay? And all these courses, there's all these testimonials and plus, of course, 12 months access to this is exact software and any future updates, by the way. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, check the link, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.